this brings us into the realm of neuroendocrinology. Is that there's a fascinating relationship between the hormone system and the nervous system, and you know, hormones work in general on slower time scales. The definition of a hormone is something is a chemical released at one location in the body, goes and acts at multiple locations far away and within the body. Pheromone would be between two bodies. Neurochemicals like dopamine and serotonin tend to work a little more quickly. There are hormones like adrenaline and cortisol that can work very fast, but here I'm referring mainly to testosterone, prolactin. Prolactin tends to be, in men and women, tends to make people kind of lazy and want to um, take care of young. It tends to throw down body fat so we can stay up late. It's secreted in response to having children. These are all in humans and in animals. There's a very interesting relationship between testosterone and dopamine mm -hmm. that speaks directly to what we're talking about now. So dopamine and testosterone are closely related in the pituitary system. And obviously uh, testosterone comes from the adrenals and from the testes. But the, the major effect of testosterone is to make effort feel good. Mm -hmm. That's what testosterone does. It has other effects too right? Reproductive effects, androgenizing parts of the body, et cetera. But it makes effort feel good. The testosterone molecule is synthesized from cholesterol. Cholesterol can either be made into cortisol, a stress hormone, or testosterone, but not both. So you have a, a limited amount of cholesterol and it gets diverted towards stress or towards test or this pathway where effort feels good. Mm -hmm. That's the pathway you want to get into. The anger pathway, if we were to just kind of play a, a mind experiment here. The anger eventually is gonna divert more of that cholesterol molecule to cortisol and stress, and you will be slowly depleting testosterone. Now going into this, you'll have plenty of testosterone, but after a couple days, there've been very interesting studies showing that testosterone doesn't necessarily drop with sleep deprivation. That's a bit of a myth. You need it to replenish testosterone. You need sleep to replenish testosterone eventually. But the real question is, are you enjoying what you're doing? And here that the work was, uh, some of the major work mm -hmm. on this was done by Duncan French, who runs the UFC training center. He did his PhD at Yukon um, stores, did a really beautiful PhD thesis looking at the relationship between stress hormones, testosterone, and dopamine. Really interesting work. And the, the takeaway from all of this is if you can just convince yourself, or ideally, if you can just enjoy yourself, you are going to maintain or maybe even increase testosterone stores, which will make effort feel good. And to me, aside from neuroplasticity, where everything becomes automatic after this experience, to me, that's the holy grail. When effort feels good, life just gets way better. And we're not talking about achieving the reward. I'm not talking about the end of this thing. I'm talking about the process of it feeling really good. Yeah, the you know, there is a magic to... Uh... I don't know if you can comment on this, but I find myself being able to, if I just say I'm feeling good, like this this old hack of like smiling while you're running. If, it, if I just tell myself I'm feeling really good right now, no matter how I'm actually feeling, I'll start feeling way better. And the whole thing, there's the cascading effect that uh, allows me to maximize the effort. It's, it's, it's quite fascinating. It's, it's weird. Hormones are powerful. The relationship between thoughts and hormones and these physiological things is enormous. I had a colleague that a, a few years ago, he was dying of, of pancreatic cancer. And I was interviewing him just because he's an important figure in our community and I was a friend. And there was one day where he he told me, he said, you know, I don't wanna make it past the new year. I just, and it was, it was crushing for me to hear. And I knew that he had been on some androgen therapy um, for, a, for a whole set of other things. And I, I said, you know, um, have you taken your andro androgen cream? And he was like, no, I haven't done it. Go get it for me. I have this on film. He takes it, he puts the androgen cream on. I'm not suggesting people take androgens, by the yeah. way. 10 minutes later, he says, you know what? I think I wanna live into the new year and I'm gonna write 12 letters of recommendation. He went to MIT, by the way. He said, I'm gonna write 12 letters of recommendation, and he did. And so there's something about these molecules that in an ancient way, in all organisms, all ma mammals, as far as we know, are linked to the will to live. 
they're linked to effort and making effort feel good, which has been fundamental to the evolution of our species. I always say, people think that the opposite of testosterone is estrogen, but it's not. The opposite of testosterone is prolactin, which makes us feel quiescent and not in pursuit of things, et cetera. Testosterone makes effort feel good. Estrogen makes emotions feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and they are in mixed amounts in, um, in all people, as I say, of all chromosomal backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. 